Council to order. Would the clerk please read the quote for the day? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Gratitude makes sense of our past, brings peace for today, and creates a vision for tomorrow. Thank you very much. Today we have some special guests joining us from Boy Scout Troop 890. It's sponsored by Holy Family and St. Clement's uh, Catholic Churches. I'd just like to read the names of the scouts that have joined us today. First of all, their assistant scout masters, Jim Hosh and Tom Ehrenreich. And then the scouts are Sergio Isidoro, Benjamin Knudsen, uh, Robert Saraski, Randy Gilmore, Tegan Kevis, Kyle Fluke, Alexander Gilmore, Tristan Veldorm, uh, Abraham Hopp, Austin Specht, Levi, Levi Rona, 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 Jason Rona, 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 Rona Alex uh, Hershev, Wade Heslink, and uh, Pablo Gonzalez. So thank you for being here today. Would you all stand and, and would the scouts please lead us in the pledge? Thanks for joining us today. Next, we'll move on uh, to roll call. Would the clerk please call the roll? There are 10 present. Next, uh, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes from our last council meeting. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to approve. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. We have uh, one resignation tonight. I'll turn it over to City Attorney Charles Adams. Our one resignation is Ray Hain from the Board of Water Commissioners, effective immediately. Thank you, Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mary. I make a motion to receive and file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Uh, next uh, item 1.5 is mayor's uh, appointments. Um, city attorney. And the mayor has uh, submitted the following appointment for your consideration. K. Hill to be considered for appointment to the Housing Authority to fill the unexpired term of Donald Tershner, whose term expires April 20, 2020. Thank you, and that uh, appointment will lay over till our next meeting. Next, uh, we have a presentation on the downtown grocery market study findings. Chad Pelichek, the Director of Planning, will give that presentation. So we um, hear a lot about the, the need for a downtown grocery store from a lot of people within the community. So back in March, the city uh, looked at hiring a consultant to analyze if there is enough market potential for a downtown grocery store. So tonight, I'm gonna walk through some slides as it relates to the findings of that study and some next steps as it relates to that study and then um, talk about some uh, how, that, how that might be implemented as we move forward. <clears throat> so in 2019, the city hired Keith Wick and Associates, which is a contractor out of Minneapolis that is a grocery store uh, consultant that has over 40 years of experience in supermarket <coughs> research. Um, Keith Wicks, we had first obtained him back in 2009 to look at the same uh, market, the downtown, to see if there was enough market demand to support a full service downtown grocery store. At that time in 2009, downtown Sheboygan did not have the supply and demand necessary in order to support a store. So in this study in January of 2019, we looked at three potential locations uh, for that store. Uh, one is a city-owned parking lot on Pennsylvania Avenue, east of the Penn Avenue Bridge, Penn Avenue Pub. So between the Penn Avenue Pub and the Jimmy John's uh, strip 
uh, building on the corner of 8th and uh, Pennsylvania, the former Social Security building, which the city owns, and a building on the corner of the intersection of North 8th Street and Michigan <coughs> Avenue. So I understand, it's hard to read this map, but what you can see from this map is the trade area for, um, for a typical grocery store is, is within a mile. So whatever you have from grocery services within a mile of the location, um, this shows the outer ring is I think the actual two miles and the inner ring is the one mile radius in that trade area for the downtown there. The, the downtown is really serviced by eight different store brands within that mile. So um, that typically is the distance that a person can travel, uh, the longest a different dis person can travel to get groceries. Um, this type of store uh, could fit in this area there in the market demand uh, within that uh, sector that there's still some cushion even though there's eight uh, competitors within this one and a half mile radius. So I, I just want to address this as well. So we hear a lot about the food deserts and, and with the closing of Save-A-Lot on the North A Street has that created a food desert for Northeast Sheboygan. And um, by definition, the American Nutrition Association says that a food de desert is an urban area in which it is difficult to buy affordable or good quality fresh food within a mile. And <clears throat> the US Department of Agriculture has a map that you can pull up and you can type in your zip codes and it'll map out whether you have food deserts or not. So for this is the map for Sheboygan County. There's a, uh, well, for the whole kind of central Wisconsin. And what you can see from this is there's a little food desert in that little red box, which is part of the new business park. So in that area, um, should that ever be residential, which it won't be, um, but in that area, that is the only area within the county and really within the region that has the designated food desert. Um, places like Fond du Lac, Oshkosh has two food deserts. Fond du Lac has one. Um, I think that's West uh, Wapan has a one. So <clears throat> you can look at the whole state and you can determine from this if there's any food deserts by definitions um, in that you can't provide quality food and you know, fortunately Sheboygan does not uh, meet those requirements. So back to the downtown. So the downtown demographics that were looked at in this uh, study uh, projected a 0.79% a annual increase or 229 new uh, residents uh, contributing to roughly ten to $20,000 in grocery needs weekly. Um, and that's determined as the market potential and in, in, in the spending income that's available. So this is kind of all played into how they make a determination that um, if there's enough market demand to justify a store. Uh, the new store could capture upwards of 20% of the new potential or $2,000 plus um, from population growth. So the, uh, basically they're projecting that there's an increase in residents in the downtown, which we all know with the apartment development and what, and what that income is related to uh, the people living downtown. So this is very difficult to read. Um, I'm not going to read it to you. If anybody's interested in knowing more about the demographic of each of the sites that were analyzed in the trade area, but I will say that the downtown uh, trade area, uh, which is primarily the, an area from Pennsylvania Avenue to Michigan Avenue, um, and then kind of that uh, mile out from there, uh, there's 19,761 daytime workers and roughly 1,600 businesses in that area. So. Uh, in the downtown, there is a good amount of people that are both living downtown and people that are driving in to work downtown that would add potential market for a prospective person. So the three sites that were looked at is, uh, this is the Penn Avenue site. It's in the study, it's referenced as site 100. Um, this is a 12,000 square foot footprint around the blue box um, that sits between the Penn Avenue pub and the Jimmy John's um, local press building. Um, so this is the reason this site was chosen is number one, it's city owned, and number two, it's vacant, and it could uh, host a new building in that area. And number three, there's parking potential to the south side of it that is also city owned and operated. In that location, it could support up to a 12,000 square foot store. 
Um, it has a comfortable parking ratio with city-owned parking lot, and it could house a full service store of 12,000 or an expansion of a food co-op um, at 10,000 square feet. Site 200 is the 9th Street location. This is the former Social Security building directly to the west of City Hall. Um, the existing building square foot is, uh, is 5,000 square feet um, for a conversion. It could be expanded to a 6,000 square feet if the zoning was changed and allowed it to be built closer to the sidewalk. So basically building around the south and east uh, sides of it. Um, and it could, it could house up to five to 6,000 square feet expansion of a food co-op. Site 300 is, is an existing building basically directly west of uh, Urbane on the corner of North 8th Street in Michigan if that was to be redeveloped. Um, that site could house uh, up to a 10,000 square foot store. So what were the findings of the study? The findings of the study support a downtown full service market and cafe type store. So what they're saying is that a full service store would be a store that would offer basically the full gamut of groceries as well as a cafe deli type format. So a lot of the market has shown that there's a need for deli type grab and go um, type of uh, food where you could, you could go in there and there would be half completed you know, take home and warm up meals. You could buy two chicken breasts per se versus a whole bag of chicken breasts. So it's really geared towards the market of the people that are living downtown. Site 100 on Pennsylvania Avenue could support that 12,000 square foot conventional grocery. A conventional grocer would be somebody like Piggly Wiggly uh, or Pick and Save or a Metro Market. It could also uh, serve a 10,000 square foot food co-op store. Uh, site 200, the former Social Security building, could support the 5,000 square foot uh, food co-op store, and Site 3 could support the 10,000 uh, square foot food co-op. So the other thing that I, that came out of this is, yes, these there's a market for this type of use, but there's also, it's gonna take some substantial city assistance in order to make their first few years of um, their performa work. So whatever comes out of these options going forward um, in order to be profitable, there's gonna have to be some type of city incentives to do so. So the next step, so the city and the consultant, we met with three potential leads. Um, <coughs> Stefano's expansion of his deli and store. So Stefano has recently received planning commission approval and architecture review board approval to expand out um, onto Pennsylvania Avenue, uh, basically east of the uh, Legend Larry's with a deli type store um, with some natural and organic products and uh, grab and go type deli. So that's one option. A second option is working with Tietz's Piggly Wiggly and the corporate Piggly Wiggly staff and working through a condensed version of a larger scale 80,000 square foot Piggly Wiggly kind of shrunk down to a 12,000 square foot to be more of a metro store. And then the third option is to work with Goodside Grocery um, and see about them expanding. So right now Goodside Grocery Food Co-op, which is on the corner of St. Clair and 8th is about 1,500 square feet. Um, this would be a substantial expansion for them to expand into five or 6,000 square feet um, and bring more services and products. So we've met with each one of these um, groups and presented the findings of the study. Um, we have some leads on, uh, obviously Stefano's option is, is hopefully moving forward, but um, the Piggly Wiggly and the Food Co-op, this is a little bit of a different uh, expansion for them, so it's gonna take a little bit more working through the numbers to make those successful. At this stage, I can't sit here and stay, say that there's a downtown grocery store coming next week. Um, this is a challenge that not only Sheboygan has, but uh, Green Bay and a lot of other urban areas have had struggles with uh, downtown grocery stores. At least our numbers are good that they show that there's the potential for a downtown grocery store to be um, successful, but uh, it's really about trying to recruit somebody and um, being able to find a location that will serve their needs with parking and the size of the building that they need. 
So that's what I have on the downtown grocery store. If there's any questions of the Common Council, I'd be happy to address them. Seeing no questions, Chad, thank you very much for this information this evening. <clears throat> Next, we'll have a presentation on our third quarter of 2019 strategic plan action items and critical measurements reviewed by City Administrator Daryl Hoffland. Uh, thank you, Mayor Vandersteen. Uh, this evening, I will present an update to the City's action items and related uh, benchmarks. These items uh, were identified in the 2016 approved five-year uh, strategic plan. Uh, this is the document. It's located on the city's website. In fact, there is a, a, uh, a button on the bottom left corner of the city's homepage. As a reminder, the key components of this plan are six focus areas. They include quality of life, infrastructure and public facilities, economic development, neighborhood revitalization, neighbor governing uh, and fiscal management and, and finally communication. Uh, please note that some of the projects are multi-year in nature. Uh, several in fact have been uh, postponed until calendar year 2020. Uh, staff works collaboratively with internal and external partners for support and, and improved collaboration. And again, we, we attempt to leverage intergovernmental <coughs> resources in order to maximize savings and improve output. Staff utilizes public feedback for improvement, modifications, and again, uh, we're hoping to add additional benchmarking opportunities in working with other municipalities in order to compare and make sure that we are fiscally uh, responsible. Uh, on the handout that was included as part of your packet or on your desk, uh, items that are blue uh, hopefully are easy for you to identify and indicate that we have met or exceeded our, our benchmarks or, our, or accomplish the action item. Uh, so let's move on to the first uh, focus area, which is quality of life. Again, this is for uh, January through the end of uh, September or full three quarters. Uh, I'm going to hit some of the, uh, so the highlights of this. And again, if you have any questions along the way, please, please uh, stop me. Uh, first, uh, on line 23 of your spreadsheet, uh, it discusses the goal of having traffic radar trailers. Um, the goal is uh, seven. A year to date, we've had 17 deployed uh, throughout uh, mostly neighborhood uh, areas. Uh, again, as a reminder, as older persons, you can make a request for trailers to be placed in an area of concern that you have or your constituents have. Line 24, uh, twice a year, the city promotes a prescription drug collection uh, program. Uh, last month, in fact, was the 2nd of 2019. Uh, of the pounds that were collected, in addition to those earlier and throughout the year, uh, roughly 1,400 pounds of drugs were, were dropped off. This exceeds the goal by 18%. Uh, line 26 of your spreadsheet uh, uh, discusses another important strategy for the city, and that is to improve the uh, the community's quality of life through enhanced neighborhood involvement. Uh, 88 neighborhood meetings of those associations have occurred through September. Uh, last item under quality of life is line 28, a walkability score. Uh, this is another indicator of what's important in our community. The city's walkability score is 89, which is just above our identified target score of 88. Uh, another quality of life uh, is uh, the addition of a little over half a mile of additional trails along the uh, ATC corridor. Um, again, uh, this is uh, a project where Sheboygan County is taking the lead and the city is working with them um, as, as questions come up. In 2019, uh, three adopted parks uh, we found community partners, so we're 150% above our target. And uh, also uh, an important quality of life for our community um, is a service that is offered through Shoreline Metro. Um, Shoreline Metro uh, itself, uh, we're at 83% of our target uh, through September. Uh, 
Uh, so clearly we're exceeding uh, our normal uh, goal. Uh, and Metro, um, our Metro uh, buses were at 73%. Uh, that is located on line 40. For infrastructure and public facilities, uh, in 2019, for the first time in nine years, the city has received uh, new buses. In fact, five have been received uh, year to date. Uh, we're fortunate that 80% uh, of the cost of these buses are funded by the federal government. Local share of the cost is, is, uh, remains at 20%. On line 59, uh, disc, uh, identifies the city hall renovation project. Uh, we are at 99% complete. Uh, public works staff continues to work on a punch list items uh, or in essence outstanding matters. Line 62, as part of the 2016 city's transportation infrastructure management plan, the goal is to have a pavement rating of 6.25. The 2019 rating is 6.01, so we're uh, roughly 96% of our goal. Uh, this rating occurs every two years, so we continue to make advances. Line 63, <coughs> Uh, in 2019, uh, 528 trees were planted. This is the highest in compared to the past three years. Uh, again, this is really critical for our community as we focus on tree replanting in light of the emerald ash borer disease. Next is economic development. Uh, year to date, the city's received $676,000 in room tax. This represents 46% of the city's annual target of one6 Four million dollars. Please note that uh, this includes just the first and second quarter. Uh, room tax revenue is delayed in light of the reporting uh, requirements of the different hotels in our community. Uh, quarter number three is actually the largest quarter for our community <clears throat> as far as room tax. As you can imagine, uh, this represents um, late summer, early fall. It's expected that the annual amount of room tax will exceed uh, our annual goals. The city by state law is eligible to keep 30% of the room tax with 70% going to visit Sheboygan. On line 77, this, the spreadsheet identifies the 2019 value of our tax incremental district increment. Uh, it is at $195 million or 23% increase over the 2018 valuation. In 2018, the value was only 159, excuse me, 159 million. On line 79, the 2019 value of industrial property throughout the city of Sheboygan did not materially change from the 2018 value, which was 189 million. Last, uh, on line 80, in 2019, uh, the city saw two a new hotel developers taking out building permits, uh, Fairfield Inn and Suites and Hampton Inn, uh, for a total of, um, is it 120 rooms? 200, I'm sorry, 200 rooms. In addition uh, to adding additional property tax base, the city will see a significant increase in room tax revenue in 2020, especially as the city experiences the Ryder <coughs> Cup tournament and the DNC uh, convention. A neighborhood revitalization is another one of our focus areas. Um, on line 95, uh, this identifies an important part of the city strategy to revitalizing our older neighborhoods, which is to improve safety and increase residents' perception of safety. This is accomplished by many different strategies across all city departments, including the police department. The city has been successful in obtaining another three-year renewal commitment by the state for 2019 and 2021 for, again, a beat officer program to fund two police officers. Line 96, 100% of the nine eligible neighborhood associations participated in the spring cleanup event, our, our inaugural event, with 23 tons of waste collected in dumpsters. Line 107, Year to date, 122 abandoned vehicles have been towed. This is 142% of our annual goals. 2019 is expected to, uh, to exceed the number of vehicles towed as compared to the last two years. The fifth focus area is governing and fiscal management. Line 113, 
In an effort to improve employee morale, retention, and performance, the city holds annual picnics as well as an annual anniversary recognition event. Line 116, the city received recognition by the Government Finance Officers Association for its 2019 budget document. In 2019, only 22 Wisconsin communities have been recognized. This is Sheboygan's third consecutive award. Line 118, the city has uh, the challenge of operating many legacy software applications, which is duplication of the operations and maintenance of an updated or replacement software, often a module in our MUNIS system. Year to date, the city has retired three legacy applications. Line 120, our new MUNIS module that was implemented, uh, which played a cr critical role in our 2019 budget, was a budget module. The total number of modules currently in operation are 26. Uh, the last focus area is communication. Uh, this, uh, line 20, 125, the city recently received an award by ARP uh, for its livability Sheboygan community plan. Goals of the plan incorporate several community strategies. Line 130, the city has initiated a relationship in 2018 with ClearGov to share this with Sheboygan residents its financial information in a transparent manner. In addition to making financial information available, it also provides viewers with how Sheboygan compares with other Wisconsin communities of a similar, similar population. Social media on lines 133, 134, 135, 139, and 140, the city has fully embraced social media in reaching out to its residents, especially with, as traditional media sources, daily newspaper has waned. Year to date, the city has exceeded its goal in all forms of social media. Lastly, line 143, one of the fire department's critical goals is public education. This is accomplished in part by holding or participating in events such as elementary school events, a special Olympics, station tours, and Boy Scout events. Last slide for you. Again, all projects, programs, purchases, and decisions are truly based upon their impact on the six strategic plan focus areas. Uh, for more information about the strategic plan, uh, again, it's located on our website, which is sheboyganwi.gov. Uh, I'll entertain any questions or comments that you may have. Alderperson Sorensen. Um, okay, just a, a, a few quick questions, Daryl. Um, <clears throat> lines 51 and then 61 as well. Um, I think 61 is, I'm, I'm just sort of curious if this is regarding streets um, and resurfacing. Is, is 61, is that we're kind of referring, is the last percent and quarter, is that just finishing North Avenue? Uh, in, the, in the past several years, uh, the goal has been at minimum 3.75 miles. Okay. Uh, you're correct in identifying that we will not achieve that in 2019, uh, specifically because of the sort of the intensity associated with the North Avenue yeah. project. Okay. Uh, again, this project is expected to reopen to the public after Thanksgiving. Uh, this is a federally run program, uh, so the timing is a little bit delayed. Again, uh, the city has limited control because it is a federally run pro project. Okay. And then 51, and I guess my question was just regarding if we were anticipating finish that, finishing that in the fourth quarter, um, but I guess not. And then line 70, um, market infill development site. Is this regarding the innovation district? A market infill development sites along Indiana or Avenue? Or is that the, the Badger State Lofts? I'm just kind of curious what, what, what the plan was for that one and yeah. why it's only at 10%. Uh, this one more specifically focuses on the block uh, between 9th and I think in 10th street uh, where uh, several buildings were demolished, mm -hmm. uh, uh, purchase, purchased and demolished by the city's RDA. Uh, the city is in discussions with a developer who uh, hopes to break ground sometime in 2020 on a multiple story uh, office building. Okay, cool. Thanks, Daryl. You're welcome. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much for that information. Darryl. You're welcome. Next, we'll move on to public forum. There is no one this evening. 
Okay, thank you very much. Um, next, I'd like to announce that uh, we had a recent uh, uh, retirement from our Board of Water Commissioners, so we'll be conducting an election, which will be held on our next council meeting, November 18th. Um, the term to begin immediately and end on September 30th of 2020. Those interested uh, may contact the city's clerk's office for more information or to send in uh, their letter of intention for that office. Next, move on to mayor's announcements. The League of Municipalities held their annual meeting in Green Bay on October 23rd through 25th. This year, we budgeted for all their persons to attend in addition to the mayor. Uh, the four uh, that joined me were Alder Persons Barb Feldy, Rose Phillips, Marcus Savaglio, Ryan Sorensen, and Todd Wolf. I guess that's five, excuse me. The, uh, we'd like to review some of the takeaways that, uh, that I had from the, the meeting and also share the opportunity with the other Alder Persons. Uh, the, While we were up in Green Bay, they offered a tour of neighborhood development projects. They've assembled many larger sites and been successful in finding developers to develop townhouses uh, rather than smaller homes. Uh, many times it's difficult for a single family home to be built and have it uh, be able to be sold uh, reasonably. And this allows them to increase the density in those areas and, and uh, then make those de developers successful. They also um, use their RDA uh, to augment this uh, multi-home development. They've closed out several TIF districts, as we have done with one this year, and are keeping them open for one additional year, which is allowed by the state. And they'll generate $3.6 million for their housing program. And this is also managed by the Redevelopment Authority of Green Bay. We had a session on flooding and um, they showed graphically that we had 15 more rain events since 1950 than in the past. And um, the reoccurrence of many uh, three plus uh, inch rain events has uh, kind of uh, changed the 100 year flood levels and those haven't really been adjusted and, and this was suggesting that they need to do that in the future because uh, these extra uh, rain events have changed that, uh, that landscape. Um, we taught, discussed conditional use permit changes and they noted that Kenosha has kind of led the way in rewriting their conditional use a permit zoning ordinance uh, to adhere to the new legislation that was passed last year. So we're going to take a look at that and see if we need to make some changes in ours. In 2017, Act 243 requires cities to file some new reports. They have to file a new housing fee report and list all the fees that are charged for building permits, impact fees, park fees, land dedication, fee in lieu of land, uh, plat approval, stormwater fee, uh, water or storm hookup fees. And we learned that this is a one-time mandatory report, but if it is not finished by the end of the year, it prevents us from charging those fees in the future. Um, we met with representatives of the Department of Revenue at the meeting and they're working on legislation that could restore part of our utility aid payments that were lost to Sheboygan when Line Energy closed down Unit 3 and 4 and we lost that utility aid payment. So we're uh, working with them. There still would have to be legislation passed by the legislature to restore some of those funds to us. Um, and now I'd like to ask uh, Alderperson Feldy if she'd like to make a few comments. Shops, um, um, liquor licensing, and learned about the different classes, and I am in that committee, so that was helpful. Um, PFAS, which is something new that um, is now, it's a man-made chemical that they've discovered in both drinking and groundwater, and the League of Municipalities feels that um, the, the municipal government is probably going to be writing more of the laws on this than the, the state government will. So um, that's something that we're going to be watching out for. Um, how not to become an ethics case study. Um, that was interesting. Um, uh, very debatable. Uh, new legislation affecting municipalities um, that, that will be coming down the pike um, now that we have a new governor. And um, 
innovative housing solutions, which I really found interesting. Um, it was um, a range, range of housing choices um, that treats the needs of all levels of income. And um, some of it was like cottage clusters or municipalities are using larger lots and breaking them into smaller properties. Um, they're getting multiple tax base that way instead of just um, one tax base off of it. I found that very interesting. So it was a good conference. Um, I enjoyed um, hearing Leroy Butler um, do the closing <laughs> Um, ceremony. Um, it was um, interesting to know that um, he grew up uh, as a child was in a wheelchair and then developed, he was the first one to do the Lambo Leap. So that was interesting. Thank you very much for sharing those takeaways. Next is uh, Alderperson Phillips. No, I didn't plan on Okay. Um, then we'll go on to Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I put mine together, my notes a little bit different, um, just to kind of help everybody understand. For me, it, it, it was the 121st um, League of Annual Conference of Municipalities. I was just amazed that it's the 121st. So there were many different subjects uh, for, our, for the elders to, uh, that attended could choose from. Although the decisions on which to participate were difficult, having several elders uh, attending allowed for us to, to kind of pair up and learn together. So I found it very positive that we could go into a session together and we could bounce <clears throat> ideas off each other and ask questions accordingly. So one of them that I attended was a deep dive on HR Resources 101. And being that I'm from the private sector of business, I wanted to see how what the differences were from a municipality compared to um, business. So I thought that was quite interesting. It was also interesting that the league annual business meeting was the mayor of Gary, uh, Gary Indiana, and she talked about the benefits that they've done there with housing and, and different things. Um, so she was a really great speaker um, for us to kind of expand on. Um, we also had a little bit of a, a mock and effective meeting uh, for council, and it was kind of on a humorous side. Uh, there were certain people that were um, kind of uh, positive and some people were negative. So you got to see how some characters in other municipalities work together and how team building is very important and good communication and understanding what each person is, whether it's the um, city clerk's position or the city attorney's position or the mayor's position, understanding how each of those all work together in, in running a smooth meeting. So it was a fun example uh, with a lot of issues uh, that, you know, in regards to respect and challenges. Um, I also participated in the Engineering and Public Works Roundtable. I thought that was very um, effective, especially because it allowed a lot of municipalities to ask questions, uh, large cities, vil small villages, all the different gamut, and we could bounce ideas and questions off each other. Um, I also, there was an exhibit of 104 different vendors, so obviously anybody's sharing their wares that participated. I also went to levy, levy limit strategies, and as you guys have heard, possibly, the city of Sheboygan's gone through stuff like, uh, you know, levy limits and how it, how it pertains to um, taxes. So it was interesting to see how other communities uh, deal with that. I also went to storm waters and mitigation, utilizing suspended uh, pavement. You guys would really enjoy that. <laughs> I'm just saying, it's really uplifting. Um, Bring the video. <laughs> I'm waiting for the movie. So great options for cities that don't have, that are, have tight constraints, kind of like the downtown where you don't have a lot of grassy areas. And then what do you do with a lot of, a lot of flooding? And in communities that want to have trees to make it more inviting, the problem with trees is you have to have, you know, again, space to, to grow things. So there's actual ways around that. Re rethinking the GIS, um, informed planning, deeper insights. I did this because I'm the chair of Public Works and I wanted to see how other communities are using our, the same GIS system that we have. And it's really exciting when you sit in a, in a room with other municipalities and you find out that we're actually one of the leaders when it comes to technology, at least in the Public Works area. So it was really, you know, kudos to our team. 
um, and using that type of technology. So it's, it, for me, it was uh, another great discussion, um, and it was easy for us to kind of go there and learn and bounce things off each other. So thank you. Thank you for sharing those, uh, Alderperson. Next, uh, Alderperson Savaglio. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When I go to a conference, I only look for uh, one or two nuggets to take away and uh, focus on actionable items. Uh, I spent a lot of time with Renew Wisconsin, and uh, I learned that in 2016, uh, the federal government approved a settlement with Volkswagen um, for $15 billion. Of that, 46 million ended up coming, I'm sorry, 67 million ended up coming to our state, uh, and a bulk of that money got spent on getting the new buses that um, uh, Daryl talked about uh, a few moments ago. Uh, but we have uh, the opportunity to use the bid and uh, our local government to put in uh, charging stations for electric vehicles. And I've already spoken with Chad about that uh, to try and see what we can do to get that into our community using these VW funds. Thank you very much. And last wrapping up is Alderperson Sorensen. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I, too, attended some similar uh, sessions that previous Alders uh, uh, attended as well too. Um, I attended the Innovative Housing Solution deep dive, so that was a lengthy two-hour discussion and conversation about what other elders and communities were doing across our state to address um, the, the low housing supply that is impacting um, all our communities across the state. So it was very interesting to hear what some cities were doing regarding um, updating old land use regulations, um, getting creative with small lot usage, um, and just what they do with zoning to get creative as well, too. Um, I attended the liquor licensing deep dive, um, so we're not the only city that is hitting our limit um, constantly. Um, so many other cities are struggling as well when it comes to that, except Milwaukee. They have a bunch more left. So we talked about what um, solutions would be needed for local communities to, to overcome some of their barriers and challenges when it comes to uh, um, handling licensing. Um, uh, I, we, I attended a breakout session uh, learning about uh, the dignity and respect campaign that is going on in the city of Appleton. I think that was very refreshing to hear what Appleton is doing when it comes to diversity and including um, different communities and different backgrounds, um, making sure that everyone feels welcome in, in their hometown. Um, I, had, I had the fun experience of uh, helping out the league with their um, public uh, communications um, um, and just media uh, throughout the conference. So if you check out their Facebook page, my face might pop up a little bit, and some videos and stuff too. And if you check out their uh, league wrap-up video, you might recognize my voice. I got to do the voiceover for the video as well too. So that was fun. Um, and then um, the mayor and I um, and Marcus also attended the large community roundtable discussion. So this was a great opportunity to, to chat about um, different uh, issues that were impacting our state and kind of bounce ideas off of each other. Um, just hearing that, you know, different solutions that communities are struggling with when it comes to addressing the opioid crisis, whether it comes uh, uh, regarding innovation, innovative solutions to fixing infrastructure and roads, um, and then just in different internal um, uh, issues that were being addressed as well, too. So I, I th think it was very informative. I encourage alders that are new, that are older, um, to attend the conference. For me, this was my third conference. It was the first conference I was not the youngest older person at anymore. Some of you met my friend Trevor Young, who's on the Racine City Council. He was the youngest now, so um, I, I had a wonderful time. I wrote down a lot of notes, um, so I encourage everyone to attend in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing those takeaways, and I want to commend these older persons for taking some time over these three days to attend these uh, these meetings uh, and learn a little bit more about things that we can uh, improve on in the city. Thank you. Uh, Sheboygan's forming a complete count committee for the 2020 uh, census. Uh, we scheduled a training session uh, tomorrow on Tuesday here in the council chambers uh, as this program uh, will be the program for the mayor's neighborhood leadership cabinet who will also be here and uh, we'll be having uh, Tasha Jenkins who's uh, the um, partnership specialist with the Chicago Regional Census Center to conduct the meeting. And the meeting's open to the public and anybody who'd like to learn more about the census or getting involved in the complete count committee, please stop in. Uh, later this week on Thursday the 7th, we have our landlord training program taking place. That'll be from 5.30 to 9.30 at City Hall in the room just to the um, 
west of this room. Uh, interested landlords to, can still uh, get in. Uh, there's a $10 fee and they just need to call the city planning department to make a reservation. And on your desk today is uh, with your budget materials, you'll find my 2020 budget memo supporting the budget that has been presented by Administrator Hoffland. Next, uh, we'll move on to the consent agenda. Alderperson Wolf, that'll include items 2.2 through 2.16. Through Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive and file all ROs Receive all our C's and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on any of the items on the consent agenda? Seeing none, will the clerk please call the roll? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Uh, under reports of officers, items 3.1 and 3.2 will be referred to various committees. Under resolutions, items 4.1 through 4.6 will again be referred to various committees. Under reports of committees, item 5.1 is RC number 175 of 1920 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral, RO number 95 of 1920 by the Director of Planning and Development, submitting the 2020 Business Improvement District Statement of Purpose and Budget dated October 1st of 2019, and the bid's 2020 operating budget and recommends uh, filing the document. Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the report of the committee and file the document. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I'm curious uh, just uh, as to, I know that there's been some changes at the bid um, in regarding just some organ organizational restructuring. Um, if any city staff members could just speak to just about um, if there's been any feedback from the bid or bid members or businesses in the downtown area or the riverfront, um, just about the changes and how this is, is different moving forward. Uh, Chad, would you like to respond to that? You're serving on that committee as a voting member. I can't say that I've heard from many businesses, either positive or negative on it. I think um, they're looking at, the board is looking at uh, just they get $150,000 and spend seventy five to 80000 on wages and salaries and doesn't leave a lot of money left to do other things. So they're looking at how to be more creative with the little bit of money they get. But as from the business community, I have not, I can't say that I've heard anything either, either way as it relates to it. Okay. Follow-up question? Sure. Um, I'm just, I'm curious too if, if there's a lot of expenses in here regarding operations, website maintenance, um, accounting, insurance, event coordinating, marketing, business promotion, Who who's gonna be the point person moving forward for that? Who's gonna be executing? Chad? Well, at this stage, the board is response, the board is gonna be in the executive committee of the bid is gonna be responsible for executing those now, whether they come to the city to get some service agreements or they go to visit Sheboygan to get service agreements and work with outside vendors to fulfill the requirements of what they would have had with paid staff, that's gonna be their decision as to what they decide to proceed with. Okay, is there any other discussion? Alderperson Donahue. Uh, thank you. Um, I intend to uh, vote for uh, this resolution. It's my understanding that uh, it is timely uh, in order for the bid assessment to be made and, and collected by the city. Um, I do continue to have some significant concerns uh, regarding the transition from a staff person, uh, executive director for the bid, which has been in place for a number of years, uh, to um, the, um, the plan that is before us, uh, including um, a budget that is 
lacking in detail, I think would be a, a charitable way to describe it. Uh, I understand that the bid board of directors is in a transition period and uh, that hopefully uh, we will get more information. Uh, I'm, I'm voting for this, but I continue to have um, concerns. Uh, page five of the uh, uh, proposed agreement uh, indicates the board of directors is going to look to contract with the city for coordination of existing of events in the bid. And maybe they won't, but at least they're looking at it, including Riverfest, Night Market, Restaurant Week, and pop-up shops. I'll note that not so long ago, we transferred our event planning to uh, for City Green concerts, for the 4th of July, and I think there are a couple of other events uh, to visit Sheboygan. I don't believe that event planning is anything that the city, number one, is particularly qualified to do, and number two, I'm not sure that we should be um, spending our limited resources, even if we get money to do that from the bid, uh, I continue to have concerns. So it is my hope uh, that we will continue to get reports that as matters settle down and, uh, and the bid board of directors engages in, in some, some real planning about this really 180 degree change in how they're doing business, that they stay in touch with us. Um, I just want... <laughs> I just keep having this vision of, you know, the, the social director on a cruise ship. And I don't think that the city needs to be the social director on a cruise ship. So enough said, um, but uh, I, I'll, I'll be paying attention, I guess, would be a, a fair way to put it. Thank you. Alderperson Bourne. Thank you, Mayor. <clears throat> this was quite a, quite a lively discussion at Finance and Personnel uh, particularly between Alderperson Donahue and Attorney Gass, who represented the bid. I have some of the same concerns that uh, Alderperson Donahue has. My particular concern is who's going to be the staff person from the city that's going to be working with the bid? Uh, what is the time commitment going to be for that staff person from the city? Uh, is that staff person going to have enough time to do what, the, what they're asked to do for the bid? So I'm also going to support this tonight, but I hope it comes back to finance and per, uh, personnel in the near future for an update. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other discussion, will the clerk please call the roll? Nine eyes, one no. Motion passes. Item 5.2 is RC number 176 of 1920 by the Public Works Committee to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 92 of 1920 by all the persons Wolf and Sorensen, authorizing the emergency slope repair along the Sheboygan River near South Water Street and Jefferson Avenue and recommends adopting the resolution as amended. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to receive the RC and adopt the uh, substitute resolution. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion? Alderperson Sorensen. Uh, thank you, Mike. Um, I'd just like to thank the Department of Public Works staff. I know that this has been a lengthy process. Um, just for others to be aware, this is sort of the um, uh, the slope of the bank near the river, uh, just off of Water Street and Jefferson Avenue, um, behind um, the, the school district um, administrative offices. I know that moving forward, we discussed um, just with, with the ground freezing over and getting colder, um, the ideal time to be doing this would be the, the upcoming uh, months. So um, I know it's been a lengthy process, but we discussed it at hand at Public Works. So I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Thank you. Alderperson Bourne. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I was I'm going to address my question to uh, Director Beeble. Uh, Director Beeble, I read over the document here on, on the repair, and it's a pretty thorough explanation, but I guess my question is, is this going to be, in your opinion, a permanent solution to this problem, or is this going to be a continuing problem, not only in that area, but other areas along that bank? With, with the product and the methodology that we've selected this is going to be more of a permanent repair 
Uh, that's what was the debate and took us some time to research given that the steep slope and where the outfall of the sewer currently outfalls on, on the bank, this product will ultimately create a situation where it's, it's a more permanent repair. One of the difficulties we had was, as we mentioned, the steep slope, as well as the outfall in the Sheboygan River. We need to keep the outfall above the water line, given with the ice issues, as well as permitting and DNR issues with, with excavating at that location. It's virtually impossible to get equipment. We're gonna do this from the top down. So we'll be removing quite a bit of the intersection to ramp down this slope to safely install the product for erosion control and ultimately providing a good spillway for the outfall. Thank you. Alder Person Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I, I just wanted to add to it, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Dave, uh, the, the actual stormwater sewer, the outfall as you called it, is, dates back to 1926. So that's part of the problem. It, yeah, it's it's quite old and it's failed, and uh, where it, where it's failed is now it's eroded se severely the embankment around this area, as well as when we get into the intersection, many of the sewers in that location are are from the twenties as well, and we will be reconstructing the intersection and the storm sewer network in that area as well. Thank you for that discussion. Seeing no other uh, lights on, uh, will the clerk please call the roll? All eyes. Motion passes. Um, item 5.3 will be referred to the Public Works Committee. Under general ordinances, items 6.1 through 6.3 will be referred to various committees. Um, and then we'll go on to other matters laid over. Uh, item 7.1 is RC number 158 of 1920 by the Committee of the Whole, to whom is referred RC number 135 and, uh, of 2019 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, um, direct referral resolution number 83 of 1920 by Alderpersons Donahue and Boren, establishing the 2020 budget appropriations and the 2019 tax levy for use in the calendar year. Uh, and recommends adopting the resolution with amendments. Alderperson Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that uh, the council receives the RC and adopts the substitute resolution for items 7.1, 7.2, and 7.3. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Uh, under discussion, I'd like to ask Administrator Hofflin to give us an update on some of the numbers that have changed in the last week uh, in this document. In light of uh, the audience members tonight, uh, I guess I'm gonna go through uh, the updated numbers as well as a little bit of background. Uh, the proposed 2020 budget uh, public hearing was held on Monday, October 7th before uh, this body. Uh, the document that uh, has been presented to you uh, the first Monday in September uh, has really four basic purposes. One is it's a policy document uh, that is defined by the Common Council as a, pol as a direction toward which the city is moving. It's also a financial plan, which defines various sources of funds to be collected as well as services, programs, activity that citizens can expect to be provided. Uh, the third uh, basic purpose is it's an operational guide for department directors on how programs and activities are structured. And finally, it's a communication device providing the public and other entities uh, with a document defining in layperson's language as opposed to past budget documents, which were exclusively num numerical in nature. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this budget helps implement the city's strategic plan, which is covering the areas 2017 to 2021 and implements the city's five-year capital improvement program. The total financial plan uh, identifies a decrease of 25 million. Uh, last year's or 2019's budget is 135 million in total. Uh, the proposed 2020 budget is 110 million in total. It's a 19% reduction overall. For personnel changes, the city currently has 451 employees. Uh, two additional positions are recommended to be created. One is a grant coordinator. 
uh, which is funded totally by uh, block grant or tax incremental district funds. Also, the water utility is requesting an additional distribution technician. Uh, positions that will decrease or be eliminated uh, is a network administrator position, as well as two and a half maintenance workers in our public works department. Key uh, major public works projects are uh, reconstruction of Superior Avenue between North 29th Street and North Taylor. This is three tenths of a mile. Uh, the cost of this project is $2 million. Three and a half million dollars of other street improvements uh, will occur surrounding the former tannery or the Copley storage building. Also $2 million of both sanitary and water main replacement or repair will, will occur. In order to accomplish the goals of the 2020 budget, uh, $3.4 million, $3.6 million of general obligation bonds will need to be issued, plus an additional $2.9 million of tax incremental district related projects for a total of $6.5 million. Overall, property tax levy is recommended to increase by $322,387. This is a 1.36% increase. The exact amounts are, um, are 23,770,487. That's our current levy. Proposed increase is $24,092,874. The associated city's tax rate will increase by 13 cents per 1,000 assessed value. So for each 100,000 valued property, the taxes will increase for municipal purposes $13. Thank you very much. Is there any other discussion on the motion? Seeing no call ins, would the clerk please call the roll for passage? Ten eyes. Motion passes. Item 7.2 and 7.3 um, are uh, RCs number 159 and 160 by the Committee of the Whole. To whom was referred RC number 136 and 137 by the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee and a copy of Direct Referral Resolution number 83 of 1920 by Alder Persons Donahue and Boren establishing the 2020 budget appropriations and the 2019 tax levy for use during the calendar year and recommends filing the document. Alder Person Sorensen. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to file. Second. Thank you for that motion and support. Is there any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes. Then we'll go on to other matters authorized by law. I call on City Attorney Adams. 8.1 is an RO by the City Clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending December 31st, 2019. December 31st, 2020, June 30th, 2020, and June 30th, 2021. That'll be referred to the Licensing Hearings and Public Safety Committee. Next, we have a contemplated closed session. Alderperson Wolf. Thank you, Mayor. I make a motion to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in Section 19.85, Sub 1, Sub E, Wisconsin Stats, where competitive and bargaining reasons require a closed session related to the possible sale of the city-owned property in downtown Sheboygan along Pennsylvania Avenue at 229 South Pier Drive. Second. Thank you for the motion and support. Um, would the clerk please call the roll for closed session? To say aye. 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 All eyes. Motion passes. This will end our uh, transmission of our uh, meeting tonight. Council is planning on adjourning in closed session. So thank you very much for your attendance and viewing this evening. We'll take a three minute recess and reconvene uh, for our closed session. <laughs>